Welcome back to the shop. It's time for the next part of machine building basics and today we're talking about electromechanics. I only have a short video planned but it should be good. So let's head on over to the bench and see what's up. So what are electromechanics? Well they are exactly as the name suggests. They are electrical and mechanical components or more specifically they are components that convert electrical energy into mechanical motion or vice versa. And the one of the most common electromechanical components that we've already talked about is motors. You feed it electricity and it rotates or in this case steps. And the reverse is of course true as well so if we turn the motor input shaft we create a small voltage on the wires and this is of course the entire premise of a generator and for a DC motor or generator like this the output voltage is of course proportional to the speed of the shaft. And the most simple and well known electromechanical component of them all are of course the basic switch. And I know, I know, they don't really convert electrical energy into mechanical motion, but they are still termed as electromechanical components. And in the sense, since you have an input energy that you can choose where to apply it, it does guide electrical energy by motion, so... But let's move on to something a bit more complicated. Now, this next object I want to talk about, I unfortunately can't show you. And that is linear actuators. And a linear actuator can be designed in several different ways. You can either have a motor such as this, connected to a threaded rod that pulls the, the carriage along or it could be connected to some type of belt system or with a rack and pinion. And there is also another type of linear actuator that are actually built up of magnetic coils. So imagine you took this motor and that you could cut through it halfway and then fold it out so all the coils were facing upwards. And then instead of having a rotating shaft you had a sliding metal carriage that were pulled along by the magnetic coils. I'm gonna see if I can pull up a picture of this here. What's common for both types of linear actuator is that they convert electrical energy into linear motion. And I know if you have a motor and a threaded shaft it, we convert it into rotational motion and then the mechanics actually change it into linear motion but still it's electrical energy converted into linear motion. And linear actuators are used in many, many places. And if we actually look at the specifics, each single axis of this CNC machine, for example, is a linear actuator. The x-axis gantry here, for example, is a linear actuator consisting of a stepper motor, rails, carriage, and a threaded rod pulling it along. And the same, of course, with this C and the... Uh, the Y rails. And I know there are examples of people buying dedicated linear actuators and building CNC machines from them. Now after this we have a slightly simpler electromechanical component. And that is a potentiometer. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Here we have a rotational potentiometer. And here we have a linear potentiometer. Now they might not be that common these days since all consumer electronics basically instead have rotor encoders and the pulses are then fed into a microcontroller to to perform logic basically. But not too long ago every single TV or hi-fi system or anywhere where you needed to set or adjust something you had a potentiometer. And a potentiometer varies resistance. So inside here we have either a metal one resistor or a carbon trace. And the central shaft is connected to a wiper. And depending on where on the carbon trace or the metal wire the wiper is connecting, we can vary the resistance between the two input legs and the wiper leg. And if we hook it up correctly, we can have a variable voltage as well on the central pin. And the same, of course, is true for the linear potentiometer. And in analog electronics, as this is, 
variable resistance then decides how quickly one of these capacitors charge and discharge. And that is what creates the timing signal. And moving on, we have a whole field of electromechanics called piezoelectrics. I might have butchered that pronunciation, but anyway, piezoelectrics. I'm not sure if this is true, but piezo apparently, I think it's in Greek, means pressing. So it basically means electricity from pressing. And easily explained, these two are two different types of piezoelectric speakers. And there are also piezoelectric microphones, but these are speakers. And inside here we have a couple of metal plates that are different types of metal. And whenever they move closer or further away from each other, they create a small, small, small change in the electrical output of the cables. And in the case of a speaker, of course, if we feed a frequency into the piezoelectric speaker, the piezoelectric elements, they vibrate. And this creates noise. Now, it's not the best type of speaker, but for small stuff and just making someone aware of something, it's quite common. Uh, you can probably find these ones in your smoke alarms in your house. And piezoelectrics are also used in sensors. A piezoelectric sensor is a device that uses the piezoelectric effect to measure changes in pressure, acceleration, temperature, strain or force. And all of these values are then of course converted into an electrical charge that we can read. And the next component I'm going to show you is an Arduino Mega. And no, technically an Arduino Mega isn't an electromechanical component. It's a development kit or microcontroller kit. However, it does have an electromechanical component on board. And that is this crystal. And crystals are used in basically all types of microcontrollers, either internal on the die itself, and there is an internal oscillator on this board, or external like here. The most common ones are made from quartz, but there are also rubidium ones, or other more exotic and expensive crystals. What they all have in common is that when you introduce an electric field to a crystal, it vibrates. And depending on the type of crystal and how it's formed, they vibrate at different frequencies. And these vibrations are used for timing, the timing of different operations in the microcontroller or in the processor. And when you ever hear someone say, this and this processor is at 2.4 gigahertz or 16 megahertz as here, that is a reference to the actual frequency the crystal vibrates at. And that gives a clock signal. And that clock signal is absolutely necessary to perform computations inside the processor. And that entire field is called a digital electronics or digital technologies. And if you want me to talk a bit more about digital electronics, please leave it down in the comments and tell me. I have some cool things and elaborations I could show you. Just a hint. Uh, but that is almost all I have to say about crystals. Another thing that might be good to know is that the frequency will change over time slightly. And that is why maybe your microwave or your car stereo won't keep the time correctly. Because unless it's hooked up to the internet these days and have a server that periodically resets the time of your local application, that clock on your car stereo or your microwave updates its time based on the crystal. And if the crystal's frequency changes over time based on temperature among other things, then of course your clock won't run correctly. And that is why almost all electronics these days have an internet connection, or one of the reasons anyway. Now I have one more component I'm gonna talk about today. And all of these components have it in common. And you guessed it, it's coils, or solenoids more specifically. Now, this entire thing is a coil. It's a 240 volt AC coil used to open and close water valves. So basically, if this one is installed on a valve, I put 240 volts to it, this coil energizes and creates a magnetic field. And that magnetic field then pulls an anchor inside the valve that causes it to open. And if I remove the voltage, it demagnetizes and the valve closes. And that's the only thing a solenoid does. It's an electromagnet. And all of these components contain them. In the case of the contactor that you might have seen me install on the Queen Bee Pro, the electromagnet, of course, pulls the contactor close and releases it. Inside a common speaker, it's a solenoid that causes the membrane to move back and forth and create sound. Now, if I only fed a DC current in here, 
I of course would only have one sound and then quiet, it would move to one position and then stop. But if I feed a frequency or a sound wave into it, an analog sound wave, then I will of course get sound as an output. And these two are the same as the contactor but smaller. They are two PCB relays. This one is a 12 volt version and this one is a small 5 volt version. So these small relays can be pulled directly by microcontrollers. Now they can't handle as high current as the 12 volt, as the contactor or even the 12 volt relay. But still they are fairly useful in most types of projects. And this is a PCB version. Now electromechanics are slowly and surely taking less and less part in our daily lives and that's because they are replaced by solid state technology. Such as this one. That's a solid state relay. And that works exactly the same way as these relays or this contactor, but it doesn't have a solenoid inside it and it doesn't have any moving parts. And of course the entire processor of a computer or microcontroller is of course a solid state component. It has no moving parts and still it can move electrical signals around, albeit at a very low voltage compared to the solid state relay I just showed you. And it's the same with the output stages of a variable frequency drive as well. In many ways I think in a couple of years contactors won't be that common anymore. And that is all I had for you today. If you liked it, you know what to do. All my resources and contact information are down in the description. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave it down below or send me an email. Until next time.